So there's a, there's a great trend uh, among donors to uh, require measurement, measurable results and so on. How do you measure joy? Mm -hmm. How do you measure goodwill? How do you measure feeling? How do you measure self-respect? I think measurement can mask outcomes. And so I think we, you know, we are also, I mean, we're, we did our program evaluation. We are putting in place our outcomes database, our systems. So part of what I have been doing is adding more systems to our work. At the same time, um, we're also having a, a real conversation about what is appropriate to measure. And let's not let measurement mask what's happening. Uh, right? You can have great measurement, but actually you're not getting your work done at the end of the day if you have a certain outcome. And could measurement actually mask outcomes? So if, if somebody comes in and feels like they're a product working through an assembly line and they, they feel bad, they've gotten their nourishment, but they feel bad about themselves. They go out feeling worse, which is corrosive to the soul and corrosive to one's self-respect and so on. Is in, in a sense, aren't you creating a, a great statistic, a poor outcome, and perhaps encouraging dependence going right. forward? And so I think, you know, in terms of measurement, it's really important. I think you can measure things like joy. You know, you may not have a perfect measurement, uh, but certainly, you know, we ask our clients, how did it feel? Did you feel respected? Did you feel a greater sense of dignity? Did you actually find that we were helpful to you in terms of your own financial situation? And the interesting thing is, is that our clients and our volunteers, I mean, through this process, when they talked about their experience of Glide, it was very similar. Um, our volunteers, our staff, and our clients all said very similar things. I feel a sense of community. I feel respected. Um, and that's incredible. Uh, and we also found, you might say the person in the meals program says, this helps me maintain my financial stability. Um, and those are so, uh, you know, so we also ask. You know, we want to know. Uh, and so we've been asking our clients, and we intend to continue asking them, what is your experience? And to be connected them, to them in those ways. So we're learning. I mean, they are also our teachers. Um, and so, um, you know, we're, if we're not asking them what their experience is and also being observant about that, then we're not doing our jobs. Could you describe, a, uh, we've referred to the MEALS program, and we've referred to a couple of other programs. Could you sketch for us the, the broad range of programs that Glide um, currently um, uh, uh, funds and, and uh, is, is involved in? When I think about our programs, I think about them in a couple of ways. Um, part of our work is about alleviating suffering. You know, how do we just help a person get through the day? Um, and part of our work is really oriented towards breaking the cycle of poverty. How do we make change happen? Um, and part of our work, I would say, is also about personal transformation. So we have those kind of buckets of things that we're doing in terms of the, in terms of the work. Uh, so in the alleviating suffering, you know, we do provide meals to people. We provide emergency services so that for people that are in crisis, they have a place to come to either find shelter or to um, get socks or to um, get an ID card because they don't have theirs any longer or to sign up for Social Security because they don't know how to do it. Uh, so those emergency crisis services is also very important. And then we run our Women's Center. And, uh, and the Women's Center, many of the women that are a part of that have been victims of domestic violence. And so we also at the same time are running something called Man Alive, where we are working with uh, men that have issues with violence and with rage. And so we've begun also that work. Uh, so you so you deal with the uh, with the protective side of, of of helping women who are um, who are seeking uh, some shelter or alternative to to a violent circumstance, and you're also dealing with the men who might be per the perpetrators and the victims of their own rage, rage in many respects. So, I mean, with the Women's Center, and it's very characteristic of Allied, we fo it is focused on harm reduction. That's the model that's used. So we're not saying to women, you should leave your perpetrator. You should do, you should stop being in this relationship. Um, you should do something else with your life. We're really saying, 
these are the choices you have made because at the end of the day we're respecting people's choices. We're respecting who they are at that moment. Um, these are the choices that you're making. How do you do that in a way that makes things safer for you? And so we're with them where they are in that moment and saying, how do we help you to be safer? In that how do you context? live the life that you wish to lead but in a way that is, that is safer for yourself? Yes. Um, and through that process of acceptance and of unconditional love, um, many of those women find that they want to change their lives. They want to stop drinking. They want to not be in an abusive relationship or they want to be different in an abusive relationship. They begin to find their own voice because oftentimes it's the first time they've been with other women. We find other agencies will say to us, this woman has been to our agent so many times that she's never said a word. I don't understand how she can be here and talking in this way. So we really create a means for them to find their own recovery, in a sense. So you don't. So a woman comes in with with some of these real issues, and you don't start off by saying, "Change yourself." No. Do something different. It's your issue. If you just behaved differently, uh, we'll protect you now. But you know, you have to you have to make some sort of a massive change you actually start off by listening and, and not judging. And you're okay. And you're okay. You're okay. We love you and you're okay. And that creates an, uh, an opening up. It creates an opening up. And then when they are ready to open, they really say, well, I want to I want to actually, I want to cut back on my drinking. I want to get my kids back. Then we're there to say, we can help you do that too. Um, and that works. So, and we also have the other women they are, they are seeing themselves now as people that have something to share with someone else. They have advice to give. They have support they can give to another woman. And for many of them, they've never, ever experienced that. And they're now on the street seeing people that they've been in group with, that, and they see someone that's, she's got my back. I know her. She's got my back. Um, and so it's miraculous. And that is very, uh, uh, that's very similar for our programs. When you, when you think about those, those basic philosophies, it's carried over from program to program to program. Um, the other programs that we run really then move from there into our clinic, our health clinic, which you could say is alleviating suffering, but at the same time, we use the clinic as a teaching clinic. Both we're teaching professionals that are coming up in the professions of social work and of nursing to come in, medical assistants, et cetera, to come up and learn about how we practice. At the same time, we do a lot of teaching of our clients about how to live healthy lives. And we put them again at the place of making choice about how they want to handle their medical care. We had one client that had, was taking about a, because they'll go sometimes from place to place to place, less so now in San Francisco with Healthy San Francisco. But this client in this instance was taking about 100 different pills. And our, our nurse practitioner said, how many pills do you want to take? And he said, about five. And she said, okay, well, let's, let's do that. You know, you'll take one for this and one for that. And it addressed his medical need. At the same time, he was the decision maker for what needed to happen, which means he's now going to take care of his own care because he's in the driver's seat. And reducing his risk? Reducing Absolutely. Reducing the costs to the system? Absolutely. Reducing the costs in terms, of, in terms of time that all these different organizations are spending with him? giving him more control over his own life, uh, giving him more time since he's not... And teaching him about his own health care. He's learning how to be a person that cares about his health. And so all, our whole practice in the, in the clinic is about that work. And, and, the, and, the, and the comments that people made about the clinic were incredible. It sounds more like health maintenance as opposed to emergency intervention. Well, we have, we don't, we're not an emergency clinic, and so we really are about preventive care uh, and primary care, and also we have an integrated mental health care model. So we are about recovery. We also integrate mental health care. So when you come for your first exam, we're going to ask you questions that find out how are you really doing, what's happening in terms of your mental status, because obviously those two things can be linked. Um, and if we find there are issues on the one, then it's a very easy handoff to have your whole system addressed. So we're doing that work. And then in terms of our other work of 
that I would call moving towards breaking the cycle of poverty, it's with our children. And there, you know, we do have more structure. Children need structure. At the same time, we are also addressing the needs of the family and of parents, because children need healthy parents. And so we have an active parent education program. Um, we actually try to do a lot to actually create community among these families. And our children's program is the most diverse of the programs at Glide. We have Latinos, and we have Vietnamese, and we've got Cambodians, and we've got African Americans, and we've got uh, Chinese, and, and Caucasians, and the whole mix of all kinds of folks um, that are speaking all different languages. And yet, it works beautifully, and we create community, and they create community. We just had an open house recently, and I went to one of the classrooms, and the teacher said, every parent came except for five. And the five that didn't come sent relatives. I mean, what an incredible statement uh, for poor families to show up in that way for their children. Um, and we always hear the stories about that not happening. Um, so in all of these areas, we're really working to bring community together and have people have a sense of belonging. Uh, and then the other area where we're breaking the cycle of poverty is through our youth work. We have a wonderful youth pro program that we run out of Treasure Island. And we're working with the folks that have been um, the forgotten ones in our system. They're the folks that are in our juvenile justice and in our criminal justice system. Um, they're the folks people don't want to hang around with or be next to on the block. Um, and these are youth that are all high school dropouts. Um, and yet we're graduating 60 to 70 percent of them. It's extraordinary. And, um, and they really come away from this program being so motivated to change their lives, to either go in to, to, to uh, benefit from the job training we've given them, or to benefit from the preparation for a college education that we've given them. And then we work with them even after they leave our program. So that gives you a broad sense of the work that we're doing. And the other piece I have not covered is housing, which really sits in a separate 501c3. Uh, but we now have three housing units of permanent housing. And in a sense, there too, it's permanent, it's not temporary, people coming in and out. Um, and it really is about creating a community in those buildings, not just about a place for people to live. Now, Glide also works in, in uh, collaboration with a number of other organizations. Um, I, I know that you work on your uh, training um, uh, programs and your education programs with, um, with some of the trade unions. Yes. Um, which, which is interesting given the economic hard times that the, that the unions uh, would be investing in, in uh, helping this youth and in, uh, it would seem counterintuitive because uh, training youth uh, uh, for these jobs creates uh, greater competition for the members, but the, but the unions are actually um, uh, doing this and, and seems to be, seem to be doing it uh, wholeheartedly. And, and uh, you also are, are collaborating with, um, I believe it's the John Muir uh, mm -hmm. School. Yes. Uh, and there are other collaborations. Could you tell us a little bit about your philosophy in terms of collaborations with, with other organizations, with the trade unions, with the business community, with other nonprofits? I would say Glide has um, chosen to have deep collaborations as opposed to just a little bit of collaboration. So when I think about the clinic, um, you know, we have a very strong pro pro uh, uh, partnership with St. Francis Memorial Hospital, and they provide the drugs for our patients. They provide um, the diagnostic testing. It's a very critical partnership for us, and it's an incredible partnership for us and for them. Uh, very important as we move forward. Uh, with the uh, youth program, as you mentioned, John Muir has been an incredible partner for us on the educational side. Yeah, yeah, we know that teachers are an important part of the story when it comes to educating youth, uh, but also we know that with the youth we work with, it's not enough. So we provide the context, the values, the framework, um, the case management, all of those things that really make all of that come together successfully. So in terms of partnerships, um, we, are, we absolutely seek partnerships where we see the opportunity for meaningful engagement and where people come truly as equals at the table wanting to do something and make it happen together. Um, and so sometimes people look at Glide and they say, Glide doesn't partner. I've heard many comments like that. 
But actually, when I look at Glide and I see our partnerships, um, we partner better than most organizations I've seen uh, because we do it in a way that really has real power and meaning across the organizations. Um, and so it's been, I think, a, 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 I think it's a unique, um, a unique approach and one that's been very, very successful for us. And in terms of the transformations that have occurred recently or in the last couple of years uh, on the infrastructure side, because you have these incredible programs, they're very complicated, yeah. uh, but you also now have, um, as, particularly as you've grown, an increasingly, uh, an increasing need for a sophisticated infrastructure. Can you talk a little bit about the transformations that, that you've spearheaded over the last couple of years um, as you've tried to build out that infrastructure in a way that is uh, cost effective, uh, but also operationally uh, potent? Uh, it's interesting, when I first came to Glide, um, we, I, had, I had someone who had volunteered, and this is one of the things I think that's unique about Glide is our volunteer program. And I didn't mention that earlier in terms of programs, but we also view that as a program. Um, but I, uh, we've had the opportunity of working with lots of different people that will volunteer time, and I had one consultant volunteer time to really look at how people were responding to change or thinking about change in the organization. And uh, it was interesting because in the organizations I've been in, and I've been in lots of organizations where change has been occurring, et cetera, usually people either might have a view that professionalizing is bad and, um, or it's corporate and, and, and that's one way and actually you know, working with the clients and doing that work is another way and those things are in conflict. And it was very interesting because when, when the staff were surveyed, and I think many, many staff were talked to, they talked about the importance of doing those two things. They talked about the importance of actually having an organization that actually runs well and actually provides its services well, in addition okay. to doing it in a way that has our values and our culture, which was interesting. Most organizations, most people, I think it takes, uh, normally as a leader, that's a big thing you have to get people to understand. Um, but I actually found that not to be something that I had to spend a lot of time telling people about. Now, as we move deeper into our work, um, you know, we have those discussions, and I talk very much about it, uh, about the value of data. Um, we, uh, one of my staff has an expression, heart smart and mind smart equals glide smart. And that, to me, captures it all. Uh, because we recognize you got to have both of those things. And the staff get that um, if our organization is not working well, we're going to fail. Well, it's interesting that you talk about the, the, the clients as being a group of individuals who demand a quality infrastructure. It's a very interesting idea. An idea that, that a, a client who requires some support themselves in terms of, of getting their own life together can, recognizes um, when something is not operating well and calls you on it. You, saying, you don't probably have the right people here to do this, this, and this because I can actually tell. Um, on, on my street level experience, my experience within the classroom where I'm trying to learn a skill, my experience at the health clinic, my experience in the meal line, I can see something isn't working here and you need to fix it. Mm -hmm. You need to get better people. And they do say that. I mean, they'll say, you know, we call our clients in our meals line and our meals program guests. Um, and, we, and they are, they are our guests. And certainly if you look at our housing, uh, the buildings are beautiful because people want to live in beautiful buildings. And if you look at CW House, it's been around for 10 years, it's still a great looking building. It's well maintained. The clients care for it. It's their home. It's extremely diverse. You know, we've got people that are multiply diagnosed and we've got people that are low income and we've got families, we've got people with AIDS. It's all, and we got children and you know, it's all of that. And it's their home and it's a beautiful building. So in terms of what we want to create the experience of, 
when you look at our care, if you look at our clinic, our staff would love to go to our health clinic because it's a beautiful clinic. The service is outstanding. I mean, if, if I go to Kaiser, I'm going to maybe have, maybe, I mean, uh, I maybe will have 20 minutes with my doctor, and she's a wonderful doctor. Uh, but if I go to Glide, I might get an hour with my doctor who really wants to know what's happening with my health and may identify things that I had never even imagined. We had one person that told a story about going to the clinic and we had it as an exam and, and the nurse said, so tell me now what's really going on. And it turned out that he had a problem. He'd had a problem he'd had for years that he'd never taken care of. That was incredibly painful. That he never thought that he could have changed because he didn't have any money. So this experience is about, you know, we, you need infrastructure. You need systems uh, to make all of this work. So we have done a lot. We've improved our financial systems tremendously over the last couple of years. Uh, we have done program evaluation of all of our programs. We ha are implementing uh, a program database that will enable us to now evaluate and really look at our work across all of our programs, both in program by program, but also across everything as a whole. We have implemented electronic health records in our clinic. We're at the forefront of that work. We're teaching others about what it means to be doing this work uh, from the standpoint of a technologically sophisticated organization. Uh, we are just in the midst of implementing a new phone system because our phone system was falling apart. Uh, so um, that's this, this past week's work, and we're still refining, but we'll get there. So, um, and we have more work. We're going to be implementing early next year a new human resources information system because we need that in order to make sure that we're really tracking both our people's progress, their performance development, um, the opportunities for them to have their careers, but also basic HR information. So all of these things have to work together. What's important and what we talk about a lot is we don't want our professionalism to squeeze out our culture. And so that's the fine balance that has to be walked. These instruments are there to support our effectiveness in delivering our work on a daily basis, but delivering that within our culture. And we recognize, you know, when you implement data systems, it does, it can change culture. Right. Uh, you have to, it does. But I also have staff that are, you know, I, I call them the pioneers. It's hard work for them to make these changes, for them to decide they're going to start to do things in a different way. But there are early pioneers, and they're struggling with it, but they're doing it. So we're congratulating those folks and thanking them for leading the way and setting the pioneering path of implementing our data in our programs. and. And, uh, and people are getting very excited about it. I have people that I would have never imagined would be excited about this. And they are biggest advocates because they see that at the end of the day, end of the day they're going to be able to do a better job serving our clients and knowing what's working and not, what's not working and tracking. Is part of Glide's secret the, the, the sense of ownership that people have um, for Glide, whether, whether one is a client? Or, or in a sense, it seems that an element of your governance actually comes from the community itself, and the community being the clients, the staff, the board, the advisors, your partners, uh, you, um, basically people connected with Glide, um, all give voice to their views, all have, have a place of respect at the table, and the response takes the information that they bring to the table seriously. We do take it seriously. I think that um, it's not easy. You know, we have a very, our board is engaging more, which I think is incredibly important. Um, and we have wonderful people on our board. So I'm very, I'm delighted about it. Uh, because frankly, you know, it actually helps me a lot as a leader to have an effective board. And um, I do, for, for me as a leader, I, this is not about me. It's about how you build an organization that can sustain itself in the future, which means that all parts of the organism need to be working and melding and pushing. And so we are actively doing work that gives our staff greater skills. When I came to Glide um, two years ago, we learned that a large percentage of our 
staff in our security department and our meals program were illiterate. Um, they felt um, that they were not fully empowered. So over the past uh, couple of years, and I, this is not because of me, it's because I also have a great leader who's running that organization. Um, and I also have a great person who's really helping us with regards to diversity and culture and all of these, uh, these things. That staff is on fire. They, they are complete owners of their work and of their own experience. Um, and they are completely on board about how they serve, what their role is. It has been, I mean, I the first day I walked into Glide, I, asked some, I was asking someone how to get to my interview. And they were like, well, I think she might be on the third floor. I had no idea where to go and who to talk to. Um, and today that staff is, I mean, they are just, they're on fire. They are completely engaged in the values work and in challenging each other and in talking about the issues of diversity and really understanding what that means in its broad context of LGBT issues and transgender issues and how to deal with clients that look like this and this and, uh, and how to really have an empowered experience together. Um, and so continually improving that experience. Continually improving and have really grown leadership. Um, you know, two of them are now, one of them is going to be a facilitator, two of them are becoming facilitators in our Man Alive group and have really gotten that education. It's been a great experience for them. So part of what we're doing is trying to create experiences um, that help people to um, empower themselves um, and, uh, and, be, and, to, and to bring out their own leadership. Uh, and that's true in all of these places um, that we're working in. And so, um, as I said, it's not easy work. Uh, but I have a wonderful team, and they're all working towards the same work. And we have two wonderful founders that have set a great stage for the organization in terms of its values and, and what we are ultimately trying to do um, and in how that work is done. So all of that works well together. Um, but it's, it's a constant work in progress. It really is. What is Glide's future? In five years, in ten years, what is Glide's future? I don't know. I mean, I think that um, the church is a big part of who we are, clearly. And, um, and the church also has its own evolution to have. Um, I think that it's a large church. How do you begin to have it increasingly feel like a little, you know, smaller to more people? Um, and I think that's, that works in some places, needs to be built in others. And how do you get people more actively engaged in, you know, changing the world and doing advocacy work and volunteering? Uh, so I think there's a lot of opportunity for how uh, these two sides of Glide can support the, the Glide programs. And the Glide Foundation. Right, how these things can work for their for a common uh, purpose that makes everything uh, everything better. Common values and and uh, different expression of these. Of Absolutely, these I mean the church obviously is incredibly diverse. Um, you know, it's really the foundation of our values in terms of the work. Um, you know, how how can that be leveraged in a way that's that's different? It makes it makes it a unique place. There's no question that, I mean, I have a lot of staff that don't go to the church. They've never been. I have a lot of staff that don't believe in God. Um, and so, you know, we're not, a, we're not a churchy place by any means. But, um, you know, but there is a spirit that runs through the place. There is a spirit that runs through the place without question. And we view that as important. Um, I view it as important. But in terms of five or ten years out, um, I, I really am moving our work, continuing to do this work of alleviating suffering because I believe that that's important. You know, Glide is a church. Um, it's a place that also cares about people and where people are. We don't want to turn people away. Um, and, if, and we do value, if you're hungry, that we have food for you. That's important. Because how can people do something with their lives if they're hungry? Um, so those basic things we think are really important and will continue to be important. At the same time, we're really working to look at how can we do more around breaking the cycle of poverty. And how can we begin to also integrate our programs even more effectively in our work? So for example, now we have a youth health program. All of our young people have the chance to get physical exams. And again, as, as you know, we look at both the body and the mind. And for our young people that are from 
Bayview Hunters Point and the Richmond and Vallejo and Pittsburgh, they are traumatized. They live in a traumatic environment. Um, and PTSD is rampant uh, in, in that community. So that need for having both counseling as well as health is really important. So we've begun that initiative and, uh, and we're teaching them about their health. So they were, and they're very interested in it. They're very interested in it. Uh, and I think it really surprised our staff, but we bring in all kinds of people to teach them and talk with them about their health and for them to ask questions. And it's really been very successful. Um, we're starting a family resource center at Glide. So we've always done work with our families and our children's center, but now that will begin to affect families in the community. So we're beginning to kind of say, how do we begin to work across all of these things that we are? We've tried to have a holistic approach. How do we begin to now really bring the work together? It's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your insight with us, and thank you so much for serving this community. It's wonderful, wonderful to have the honor of, of spending time with you.